Hi everyone, it's Megan from Between the Pages of YA and I am back finally. I know it's taken me literally forever to make another video but this month has just been so hectic. It's been uni and like it was the last month of my second year and I am finally done. So I promise that I am actually going to be more frequent with these videos uh, now that I actually have time. And yeah, well, so this week I have a book haul for you. It is my March book haul and I am well aware that it is currently April and the end of April as a matter of fact. But why not do a March book haul now? And then you won't have to wait very long until the April book haul. So, you know, it's a win-win. Kind of. I'm trying guys, I'm trying. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the book haul. So in March I got a lot of good books. I say this month, I only bought nine books last month. And I'm quite impressed with that. Like, nine is a good number. I mean, it's still not zero, which is probably why I should be buying. But, nine is progress from 19. So, let's just keep going with that. <sighs> the first book I got was actually from a charity shop, and I got it for a pound. And you probably already know that I'm collecting this author's books, but I got Revival by Stephen King. I am so close to finishing his entire collection and I'm so excited to finish it and then I saw this and it is in literal perfect condition like there is nothing wrong with it at all so when I saw it I was like well I'm gonna get it it's a pound and it's one less towards my collection so that's why I got this this is an actual clever buy did I need it no not really have I read all of his other books that I've got no but does it look good on my shelf with the collection? Yes! So therefore, a very justified buy. Next up is a book that my other half chose for me and it is Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. I've never actually read a Robin Hobb book but I've heard that they're amazing and this one just sounded really interesting and I like dragons as well. So I didn't really know much about this book but I got it anyway. I mean, I don't really have a good reason. I had a very justified reason for the last book. This, I don't have a justified reason other than it's pretty, it sounds good, it looks good, and I have a problem. Next up is Happy by Fern Cotton. I was sent this link by my friend Lauren because she thought it might help me because I have a habit of looking very negatively on life and I do suffer from mental health issues myself. So she thought that this book would kind of inspire me to, uh, I don't know, get a new outlook on life. And it actually has. Like, it is such a gorgeous book. Like, look at that cover. It's so nice and watercolour and there's just so much help stuff in there and there's so many pretty diagrams. And it actually is such a gorgeous book. And I read it before bed at night so I at least have something nice to end the day on. Next up is Evie's Magical Bracelet by Jess Ennis Hill. I've never actually been to a book signing before and then Jess Ennis was doing one at our local Waterstones so I thought why not pop along and I did and especially because Jess Ennis is a local Sheffield girl which is where I'm from I thought why not go and show my support for this wonderful athlete who has now written a book and I got it signed. So I'm very happy and it's personalised and she spelled my name right. My name was with, is spelt with two G's if any of you didn't know. It's a, it's a very strong problem when you're trying to get something with your name on it. I'll tell you that. But this sounds really good. Uh, the, prim the synopsis is, what if you had a magical bracelet that gave you a power to talk to animals? I really like that idea because I feel like I would love that. Like I already talked to my cat. And it makes me sound a little bit crazy. So I imagine if she was able to talk back, that would be very helpful. And I'd look less crazy. But I'm really excited to read this. And I'm excited. I'm so happy I got to meet her. She was absolutely lovely. Like, she was the nicest person. And then a couple of days later, she announced she was pregnant. So, turns out she was pregnant the entire time. She's such a nice person. Next up is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. 
Uh, I love this film. Like, I know the book came first and everything, but I absolutely loved this film. Like, I mean, I love Will Smith anyway, but this film was amazing. It was one of the first, like, horror-type films that I really started to love. And I was just... I've seen it so many times, it's unreal. I even did an analysis of the poster on it, and I was just completely in love with it. So when my other half showed me the fact that this was a book, which I never knew before, I bought it literally straight away. Because, I mean, I had to, didn't I, really? Did I? Did I? Yeah. No, I did, yeah. Definitely. So, basically, the synopsis of this book is Robert Neville is the last man on Earth and a virus that turns people into vampires. But not the stereotypical glow-in-the-sun kind of vampires. Like, the proper nasty vampires. A virus has been spread and turned everyone else into vampires and basically Robert is trying to just stay alive. Um, that's about it. But it's so good. I'm really interested to see how they adapted this book into the film and whether it's similar in any way or whether there's some changes and just I'm really excited to read it. Like, I think this is probably what I'm going to read next just to just to see. So then next up I got A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. After I read A Darker Shade of Magic, it took over my life and yes, I went out the next day and bought this book and then read it in that day. I have read this book and it has changed my life and I am so excited to read the next book. I love Kel, I love V.E. Schwab's writing. <sighs> I just, I just can't. I just love this book. Well, I love the series, but this book. Look at how pretty it is. I just love it, like so much. If you don't know what A Dark Shade of Magic is about, this is a sequel. Uh, a Dark Shade of Magic is about Kel, who is a magician, technically. And he travels between the three Londons. Red London, which is full of magic and wonder, and where Kel is from. Uh, White London, which magic is taken over and it's not a very nice place to live. And Grey London, which magic is not ex non-existent there, it's completely been wiped out and it's a very... I don't want to say dull, but it's quite a dull place in comparison. And there once was Black London, where magic completely took over and it was now banished. So, it follows Kel and his ways through that. And also he meets Lila Bard who is a wonderful person an adventurer who lives for the adventure and yeah I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for you but it I just love it so to lead on from this you know what's coming I bought A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab the final instalment of the Darker, Shade of Magic, uh, Darker Shades of Magic series I haven't read this yet I was going to, but I couldn't actually bring myself to finish it because apparently it's like life ruining and I don't want it to hurt me emotionally. So I do have this on my TBR, but I've not got around to it yet. And I really want to read it. I, I really do want to read it, but I just don't want to be destroyed emotionally. Like, I was already destroyed after reading the first book and the second book, so what's this book going to do? Like... I don't want Kel to leave, but I will get round to it, eventually. It's so big. Next up, I have A Tale As Old As Time by Liz Braswell. Yeah, I said that right. This is the third instalment of the Twisted Tale series by Liz Braswell, and this one follows What If Belle's Mother Cursed the Beast? So it gives a different take on a story, a, a classic fairy tale story. And Beauty and the Beast is my favourite ever Disney princess film. So when I saw that this was out, I had to get it instantly. Like I literally saw the title as a tale as old as time and picked it up and just ran to the counter. Like I was getting it that day. I could have been in debt and I would have still got this book. Which is probably not a good thing. But it happened and it's here and I have it. And I'm going to read it and I'm going to love it. I just, that's it. That's all I got. Second to last, we have Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Again, my other half picked up this book for me 
and for one I was instantly drawn to it because this cover is absolutely amazing like I just it's a hardcover which is instantly a, an attraction to me because I just love hardcovers but it's also such a nice cover and I need to read the synopsis for it because the synopsis just if the cover didn't take me in the synopsis did there is a hint of Armageddon in the air according to the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter which as recorded in 1655 the world will end on a Saturday. Next Saturday, in fact. So the armies of good and evil are massing, the four bikers of the apocalypse are revving up their mighty hogs and hitting the road, and the world's last two remaining witch finders are getting ready to fight the good fight. Atlantis is rising, frogs are falling, tempers are flaring, and everything appears to be going to divine plan. All that's required now is the Antichrist. There's just one glitch. Someone seems to have misplaced him. Tell me that was not the best synopsis you've ever heard. I just, as soon as I read it, I was like, this book, I need to get this book. And I did. And I've read it already. I literally got it home, finished the book I was reading, and then picked it up instantly. And it was probably the funniest, well, it was probably one of the funniest books I've ever read. It was so good. The writing style was amazing. Terry and Neil worked perfectly together. And it was just so funny. And I just couldn't put it down until it was finished. And I just want to read it again and again. I just love this book so much. If you ever want to read a Terry Pratchett book or a Neil Gaiman book and you can't decide which one, get this one. It's the perfect mix of both. And if not, just get this anyway because it's brilliant. And finally, this book I didn't actually buy. I actually won my first ever giveaway and I'm so happy. Like I was so honoured to win it. Thank you to S. McPherson Books. I am so happy to have won it and she gave me the choice of a book of my choice. So I went with The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. I've heard such good things about this book from booktube and from book bloggers alike and I've wanted it for ages but they, I don't, for some reason they, it's very hard to find in the UK. I don't really know why. Apart from online obviously but like in actual bookstores it's really hard to find so I've had to put off getting it for a while, so then when I won this giveaway, I was like, this is the book I want. This is definitely it. Also, I really love the fact that there's so many good authors that have blurred it, like Morgan Rose, the author of Fallen Kingdoms, and Claudia Gray, the author of the Evernight series. And it just... Also online, uh, Summer from Bottom My Book, she also blurred it, and that's just amazing. The fact that it was so inclusive of bloggers alike and I just love it and also it's about a badass female warrior in Roman times so what is n just what's not to love on that cover what is not to love about this book like it's everything and I'm so excited to read it so that's it for this month's book haul I say this month again I mean last month I'm so sorry this is so late I'm I promise I will get better. But if you have read any of the books I have talked about, then feel free to like and comment below what you thought of them. If you have any book recommendations for me, again, comment below. And just let me know what you bought this month. I'm always interested in what everyone else buys because I'll just add them to my TBR, which is ever growing. So if you like this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more. I will have more videos up very frequently, I promise you. And I will see you next time. Alright, bye guys.